organizations and individuals and anything in between, and that's in the cultural, creative sector, NHS, prison probation, and I'm just beginning to work more, wanting to work more internationally with NGOs and the human rights and international social justice. So why are you here today? They invited me. With, with, you, know, but, um, you cover your, you've got quite a big remit there, so you've got this old. <laughs> Switch. Um, we invited with her because when we met her, we were really struck by some of the things that she was saying, especially about how artists could move forward in the way that the ways that they think. And we found her really, really interesting in terms of perspectives around um, kind of supporting oneself and their practice and questioning what they were doing and if in fact they should be doing it at all. And I thought that was really great and really refreshing and that's why I liked it. And, and as an addition to that, um, one specific element that we've talked about and, and that resonates to the work that we're trying to do with Drift and with GAPS and our own work as artists is shift this uh, priority or value system whereby the work itself, the art itself, is, is, is precious and instead having the audience or the viewer or the participant as precious mm. uh, or as the perspective mm. for your work is the one you're making it for. And something that although it's actually quite obvious or it should be perhaps, uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it's not very present in the art as well. Thank you. Does that answer your question? It was your question, I think. Okay. So how do you do that? Um, well, I bring... I look after a structure of a process that will engage you in your own thinking. So I never engage in the content and I don't give directive as to what you could do. That I would imagine you are, you are the experts on. We are the experts on ourselves somebody else. So there are a number of processes which I believe take off some of the restrictions that we have when we're going about something. That might be limiting assumptions or beliefs or what we could or should do because we were trained in it or because we're comfortable in it or because somebody else says so or because currently it's in the funding system as a priority. So trying to somehow move beyond some of our own constraints in thinking. So that's, that's what I can offer, is some processes by which to do that. What I will do today is take you through probably two groups and use two processes, because if I show them all, we'll be busy for the next few hours. So I'll do two, maybe a third one. And then that hopefully will give you, the aim is to elicit more information from yourself that you then choose from what is important and what you take further into making the thing for this evening. So working. Is that you like a conduit of transformation? Well, I've not heard that one before. Um, I si simply see myself as somebody who assists other people mm -hmm. in their thinking. I don't evaluate it. I don't say it's good or bad. I don't make it, you know any choices. They're all. They're all in for you to make. Um, just to the fact that, um, um, how would you describe what? Um, I don't know what the best word is. Like healthy or like optimum thinking or process, what does that look like to you? Like, what, yeah, what, what does that look like? Wow. Um, I, I, the first thing I came to mind is something that feels authentic to you. That may not relate to an audience, that would be a, another step. Mm -hmm. And that I think requires us to, I think that's personal opinion. Uh, to have an interest in what the viewer actually gets from the experience. And um, in the past, I used to run quite a lot of after-show discussions. Um, what struck me, or what, what, what um, struck me in not a happy way, um, what surprised me is that when I was asking some of the uh, theatre or dance makers what their intention was, is often I would get an answer which either was like, well, I don't know, um, the spectator completes the action. I mean, Roland Barthes' statement taken to an extreme, which is I have no responsibility for it. Um, 
something around that. I don't know, I don't really care, I'm not particularly interested. And then things like, well, the, the audience has to come halfway towards me. We need to meet halfway. And, and then I remember two people, one from Complicite, which was Joss Holborn, and one a friend of mine who ran a company called the Glee Club and Ducky, uh, Mark Whitelaw, who both said pretty much the same thing, which is, by the time the audience has decided to come to see you and made the time, undertook the journey, paid some money or whatever, um, they've come well over halfway. <laughs> so it's actually our responsibility as artists to go all the way to them, make them feel safe and comfortable, take them by the hand, and once they feel good with you, then you can take them on a journey to anywhere. Mm, and you can take them on, mm. on a journey to magic, but, to, mm. but I think there's an arrogance in going you have to come halfway. Mm. You know? Deals? Yes, no, that's it. That's the answer to your question. Um, my question is, so working with artists, do, uh, do you come at any point of the process in creating something? So from just, I just have ideas and I run them with you, to I already have this, can you just come in and look? And facilitate? Yes, absolutely, potentially, because it, as it's a systems, not working at, yes, yeah, right from the nothing to the, actually I've got it, I've done it quite a few times, there's something that doesn't quite yet gel or sit. Um, part of what I do also was informed by when I was still pretending to be an artist, because I was trained as one, um, I was working with a woman called Simone Forty, who was one of the still original members of the Fluxus movement. She's like in her 80s now, I think. Look her up, she's quite interesting. Um, and when she gave feedback, I was working with a, a company called Le Grand Jeu, which was a collective of European choreographers, and we worked indoors and outdoors, and we just played around with stuff, and some of it was quite interesting, and some was not. But um, when she gave feedback, all she would do is describe what she saw, and then she described what she heard, and then heard, and then she described what she felt. She made no. Um, better or worse judgment. Mm -hmm. She didn't say that was good, that was bad. Mm -hmm. She may have gone as far as going, I felt. So by hearing, by us giving each other feedback to our various uh, works in progress or sharings, you could kind of work out whether something that was important to you was missing because the mm -hmm. audience hadn't seen it, mm -hmm. or whether something that wasn't that important was quite prominent. So she would literally go, well, I, I, I looked at the stage and I saw five people clad in dark coming from the side and then I noticed something else on the left. So it was great to work from feedback that was just descriptive mm -hmm. rather than evaluative. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Do you want us to keep asking you questions? <laughs> No, it's very nice though. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because it, it's, it actually harnesses my own thinking. But no, but there is one. So should we make the last? Should we make that the last, last one? Question, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you can answer it in a amount of time that is appropriate. Um, how working with artistic processes? How did that then move you into mediation of conflict? And it's the other way. It's maybe more the other way around. Is I ran a company called Physical in State International for 10 years, and our remit was to set up development, CPD, the word CPD wasn't there yet, for professional artists. So dancers, theatre makers, musicians, etc. And it was anything from two days to maybe six weeks. And I would bring in artists internationally known for their work, but also for their teaching or sharing. So there's a little bit of a story into that. And then even though we were doing very well and people even said as far as, oh, did you go and do a PSI project rather than did you go and work with Complicite or something? So, you know, it, it worked. Something worked, but I felt there was something missing. Because at best I saw people cloning well. What I didn't see is much uh, stimulation for people to develop their own unique something. So I... We stopped it, I took a break, and I started training in, sorry to use that, I know a lot of people don't like it, NLP. 
Um, and I don't stand behind the ethos, but I think there's some really useful mm -hmm. tools. Neuro linguistic programming. Sorry, again. Neuro linguistic programming. What is that? Which is about changing how to change your patterns, really. Thinking oh, or behavior really? patterns. Okay. Um, but then I went on to other things like systems thinking, nonviolent communication. That brought me into mediation. It's the thing I do least of because it's hardest to get to actually practicing war peace mediation. And I'm meeting someone tomorrow who does that. So I do work conflict based and personal. Um, Can you talk a bit about systems thinking? At some oh, that point? was the last question. That was the last question. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do that after. Mm -hmm. We can do that after. Yeah, that was a form of mediation there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's just like a stuff. Okay, so if it's okay with you, um, and I will ask, um, first of all, you don't have to do anything that I say. So if you do, you, you do it hopefully by choice. I think choice is, 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 is hugely important. Um, so I will ask for permission sometimes, maybe more than you might need to, but that's okay. You can just give a quiet yes to yourself. Um, 